The other legislation that is relevant in the context of sexual harassment is the Sexual Harassment of Women at the Workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act of 2013. This act was enacted after Section 354A had been inserted in the Indian Penal Code by the Criminal Law Amendment Act of 2013. The definition of sexual harassment in the Sexual Harassment of Women at the Workplace Act is the same as the Supreme Court had given in the Vishaka judgment. The act is applicable to a workplace as defined in Section 2O of the legislation. The legislation provides for mechanisms for redress in case of sexual harassment at the workplace, providing for internal complaint committees, local complaint committees and of course for action by the police. There is a slight overlap between the Act and the IPC in terms of definition. As I had mentioned earlier, the definition of sexual harassment in the Vishaka judgment and that of sexual harassment in 354 capital A of the Indian Penal Code are more or less the same. Note that Sexual Harassment Act of 2013 is a civil legislation and an overlapping act would be covered both by the civil legislation and by the Indian Penal Code. We need to pay attention to section 19 subsection H of the Sexual Harassment Act of 2013 which says that every employer shall cause to initiate action under the Indian Penal Code or any other law for the time being in force against the perpetrator. So if a committee constituted under the Sexual Harassment Act of 2013 finds that an allegation of sexual harassment is true, then it might have to report the case to the police for action under Section 354A of the Indian Penal Code even if the victim does not want to take this route. The other place where you see a definition of sexual harassment is in the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act of 2012. Under POXO, if a person, as you can see it is a gender neutral section, with sexual intent utters any word, makes any sound or exhibits any object or body part with the intention that such word or sound shall be heard or such gesture be seen by the child makes the child exhibit its body or part of the body or thirdly shows pornography or fourthly stalks the child directly or through digital or electronic means or fifthly threatens to use in any form of media a real or fabricated depiction through electronic film or digital or any other form of any part of the body of the child or the involvement of the child in a sexual act or lastly entices a child for pornographic purposes or gives gratification thereof is considered to have committed the offence of sexual harassment under the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act of 2012. So you see here that the definition of sexual harassment is much broader than what is in Vishaka and in Section 354 capital A of the Indian Penal Code. So you see these various forms of definitions of sexual harassment both in civil legislations as well as in POXO and the IPC. The next offence we will discuss is Section 354 capital B of the Indian Penal Code which reads any man who assaults or uses criminal force to any woman or abets such act with the intention of disrobing or compelling her to be naked shall be punished. This is a section which was important and needed to be introduced in the IPC since there were various cases happening across the country of women being publicly disrobed with an intention to humiliate the such woman. Since this was not covered directly by any other section of the Indian Penal Code, the legislature deemed it fit based on the recommendation of Justice Verma Committee to bring in Section 354 capital B into the Indian Penal Code. This also took note of caste based violence where for reasons of caste women were publicly disrobed to humiliate them and through them the caste that they belong to. While legislating the section 
parliament made one change from what the justice verma committee had recommended the section as recommended by the justice verma committee spoke about public disrobing however the newly enacted section removed the term public and so therefore now the section deals with using criminal force or assault with the intention of disrobing or compelling a woman to be naked it does not have to be committed in the public the next important section introduced in the indian penal code by the criminal law amendment act of 2013 was section 354 capital c which deals with the offense of voyeurism the section says any man who watches or captures the image of a woman engaging in a private act in circumstances where she would have had the expectation of not being observed either by the perpetrator or by any other person at the behest of the perpetrator or disseminate such images shall have committed the offence of voyeurism so as you can see the main ingredient of the offence of voyeurism is watching a woman engaging in a private act in circumstances where she believes that she would have privacy and she will not be observed by anyone else it also deals with situations where an image is captured of such woman engaging in a private act and these images are distributed to to other people the section defines private act to include any act of watching carried out in a place which in the circumstances would reasonably be expected to provide privacy and where the victim's genitals posterior or breasts are exposed or covered only in underwear or the victim is using a lavatory or the victim is doing a sexual act that is not of a kind ordinarily done in public hence it also covers the situations wherein and this is happened in cases where women have been trying out clothes in trial rooms of shops and they have been filmed doing so that would come within the definition of voyeurism even if they are not filmed and someone is watching them uh, do any of these private acts it would also come within the definition of voyeurism explanation 2 to section 354c is also important it says that the victim consents to the capture of images of any act but not to the dissemination to third persons and where such image is disseminated such dissemination shall be considered an offence so this takes into consideration those situations where a woman in a consensual relationship might have agreed to her partner making visual images of a sexual act that they are engaged in but not to dissemination of this image that is made to a third person so if a photograph or a video of a woman engaged in a private act is disseminated to third persons where the woman had given consent to taking of the picture or the video only if it were kept by the person who uh, took the video or the photograph and that person goes ahead and disseminates the image or the video then it is covered under section 354 capital c the last section which is important to see within the new ones introduced by the criminal law amendment act of 2013 is the offence of stalking punished by section 354 capital d of the indian penal code there were no sections in the indian penal code which dealt with a situation similar to stalking we had the case of the priyadarshini mattu murder where the victim had reported repeatedly to the police about the accused allegedly following her and making contact with her although she had not given consent or she had expressed her unwillingness to have any relationship with the accused these sort of stalking situations were happening across the country and there was nothing to deal with these situations which is why it was necessary to bring in the offence of stalking the section 354 d states that any man who one follows a woman and contacts or attempts to contact such woman to foster personal interaction repeatedly despite a clear indication of disinterest by such woman 
or two monitors the use by a woman of the internet email or any other form of electronic communication commits the offense of stalking the section goes on to say that the act does not amount to stalking in the following circumstances firstly if the man proves that it was pursued for the purpose of preventing or detecting crime and the man accused of stalking had been entrusted with such responsibility of crime prevention or detection by the state or secondly it was pursued under any law or to comply with any condition or requirement imposed by any person under any law or thirdly in the particular circumstances such conduct was reasonable the justice varma committee had recommended that fear of injury or apprehension of injury be one of the circumstances that needs to be proved if stalking was with respect to monitoring the use of the internet email or any other form of electronic communication by the woman in legislating the legislature in its wisdom removed that requirement and so now if you look at the section it says that any man who monitors the use of the internet by the woman repeatedly commits the offense of stalking so in summary in this module we discussed section 354 of the indian penal code we looked at the definition of the term modesty as given by the supreme court in various judgments we discussed the varma committee recommendation which said that the term modesty should be removed and the offense should be called sexual assault involving both non penetrative sexual acts as well as verbal sexual abuse we discussed the offense of sexual harassment under section 354 capital a of the indian penal code to do so we also discussed the definition of sexual harassment as given by the supreme court in the vishaka judgment the definition of sexual harassment in the sexual harassment of women at the workplace act of 2013 and the protection of children from sexual offences act of 2012 we compared the definitions in these three sections and we looked at the processes under some of these legislations we also discussed the new offenses under section 354b which deals with intent to pub- to disrobe a woman by using criminal force we also looked at the offense of voyeurism and stalking we discussed the ingredients of these offenses recommendations of justice varma committee the background of these offenses and the manner in which these offenses have to be proved thank you